Hello students, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Today we are going to continue with our previous lectures. It's lecture three. Uh, we just read um, the text which was a feature article and it was called On the Brawl. So we saw that Sarah Beryl and her colleagues are in Siberia uh, searching for tracks or uh, signs of the Siberian snow leopard. And um, there were other things about the crew, the expedition that was there. So today we are going to look into the questions that are given at the end from uh, activity 12.3 onwards. But before we do that, I would like you to um, watch a small news clip about snow leopards in Siberia. Just watch this video and uh, we'll see you after this. In this video, you will um, visually see most of the things that you read in the text. The farmers, the locals, the poachers, and the tigers themselves, and how hidden cameras recently put there in Siberia are helping us find out more about these snow leopards and the way they spend their lives. So. Here is the video. Only about 4,000 snow leopards are left in the wild. They roam across Central Asia where climate change and poaching threaten their survival. But a program in the remote mountains of Russia and Mongolia is trying to save them. Elizabeth Palmer went there to see. Our long journey started in the foothills of Russia's Altai Mountains. It became a trek into Silugemsky National Park and ended at last with a scramble above the tree line. Our guide was park biologist and researcher Alexei Kuzlikov. He's part of an innovative program to bring snow leopards back to this region by shooting them with motion-triggered cameras. The results are astounding. Intimate shots of animals so shy, they'd do anything to avoid humans. Over the past three decades, hunters and poachers had virtually wiped the snow leopards in this region out. Though completely illegal, they did show up as rugs or even whole pelts. This one in a market just over the border in Mongolia. In the village of Jazator, we found Boris Markov, a former poacher. No, no, still that Back in the day, he told me, just one pelt was worth a car. In the same village, we met Sergei Kirabyekov. Once a poacher, he shows me one of the wire traps used by locals. Crude, but lethal. They kill by strangulation. Now, though, Sergei is part of the conservation drive. He's just one of several former hunters getting a salary through the World Wildlife Fund and a corporate partner, Perno Ricard, to monitor the cameras. When you get the photo cards out, do you look at the pictures yourself to see what's there? Yes, it's so interesting. I check right away to see if there are any cubs. And often there are. Here, for example, are several babies hunting with their mother at night. The cameras do a job no human could. Even Alexei has only seen a snow leopard once, though there's not much he doesn't know about their behavior, like the way they scratch to mark territory. Like domestic cats. And here's one caught on camera doing exactly that. We headed to an adjacent valley and the homestead of Erkin Tadirov. Over tea, he explained he too was happy to be on salary monitoring the cameras. Like many in this region, Erkin keeps cattle. And I wondered if he worried the leopards would attack them. <laughs> it would seem to me that it would be a natural fear because Cows are easy to catch for them. It's easy food. Why don't they devour your entire herd? No, it's not a problem, because there's enough prey to keep them high in the mountains. Ah. That's another thing the cameras do, record other wildlife. As Alexei flips through the latest batch of shots, he can see birds, deer, even sheep. 
proof the ecosystem can support the leopards. Alexei says paying the former hunters and poachers a salary is key, but there's also been a sea change in attitude. So do, did everybody in the village want to see the photographs when you first started getting them? They lined up to see them. People who had lived here all their lives had never seen a snow leopard. Now they know how beautiful they are. Back at the National Park headquarters, Alexei showed us more pictures from 120 cameras that have been snapping away night and day for five years. <laughs> it looks like it's peering around the corner. Oh, that's magic. Of course he has his favorites. He knows every single animal by its unique pattern of spots, and he's named them all. Here's Turai, about to eat the camera. He was biting the camera. These pictures are not only a treasure trove of information for scientists, but the cameras have scared off poachers. And so there's very good news. Five years ago, Alexei said he'd counted 22 leopards in the Altai. Now there are 45. Looks like he's going to need a few more names and maybe a few new cameras. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, Altai, Siberia. Only about 4,000. Okay, so you watched this uh, small video where you saw how conservation work is going on in Siberia today. They're using motion triggered cameras uh, to capture the snow leopards. And you also uh, saw some of the poachers. Poachers are people who kill snow tigers for their felt. Shikari jin ko hum zaban mein kehte hain jo uske jo bafani cheeta hota hai uski khal ke liye uska shikar karte hain aur apni wo tricks bhi dekhi hain in which through which they capture or kill the snow leopards so now let's come to the questions most of these things you uh, already understood while we were reading the text so let's revise them once and for all so the first one is, what does each of the following words and expression from paragraph 1, 2, and 3 mean in the context of the passage? Now, there are two meanings to words. One is the dictionary meaning, the meaning that you search out in a dictionary. And uh, the second one is the meaning that is in a specific context. In, in a passage, the meanings may vary from one word to another. So, relentlessly, here, it means without stopping. So in, uh, it was used in line 15. So let's see in what context was it used here. Okay, it may be in the second paragraph or they said it was on the third one. So it was something around line 15. A Soviet engineer failed to tame the step that tracks down the Altai foothills in 1960. Got spectacle lost in the mountains and went native. This going native, this is also one of the words that was there. And this word backbone is also one of the words that uh, we are to find out the meaning of. So uh, relentlessly, without stopping, continuously. Uh, let's see what was the second word. It was Fallen. Now, Fallen is a word which means related to cats. And you know that in the cat family, there are other, um, there is a whole group, tigers, uh, lions, uh, and other animals belong to the cat family. So together these are called felon. In this context, in this paragraph, the felon means the snow leopards. And backbone in your body, a backbone is a structure that holds your body together. It's in the middle of that. So backbone in this context means a visible structure. And uh, we saw that the Altai mountains, they form the southern backbone of the Siberian Peninsula. And this word nurturing, nurturing means something which gives strength, something which uh, helps you grow. 
بھی پھولنے میں مدد دیتی ہے غذا کے طور پہ آپ کے کام آتی ہے دیٹ از کالڈ نرچر سو اس کانٹیکس میں یہ سینس میں آیا تھا کہ جو سائبیریا کے جو سرد علاقے ہیں دے آر ناٹ نرچرنگ فار لائف وہاں پہ زندگی گزارنے کے لیے کوئی مناسب حالات نہیں ہیں اینڈ نمبر ای وینٹ نیٹو وینٹ نیٹو مینس دیٹ سم پرسن ہو گوز ٹو سم پلیس ود سم پرپز اینڈ ہی لائکس دیٹ پلیس اینڈ بیکمز اے نیٹو آف دیٹ پلیس جسٹ لائک دا موگلس کیم ٹو انڈیا اینڈ دے وینٹ نیٹو ہیں So the second uh, question is, explain in your own words the purpose of the expedition. So, maqsad kya tha is expedition ka? Yes, the purpose of this expedition was to find more information about the uh, number of snow leopards left in Siberia and uh, make predictions about their future as well and the kind of dangers that are they are facing out there. Then uh, number three, explain why the volunteers were tired. Now, we read that um, the people, the 12 people who were in this expedition, they reached after a day long uh, convoy ride through Siberia and it was a tough road. So they had covered a large distance of 1000 kilometers. So they were tired. And the other thing was altitude sickness. Uh, right in the beginning, we saw that uh, <coughs> when they arrived there, they were not habitual of these high altitudes. And in these high altitudes, because there is lack of oxygen in the air, uh, yes, we found that relentlessly here, where the step relent rolls relentlessly towards the horizon. So the step going relentlessly means that without pausing without ending the the grasslands continue on and on and on towards the horizon you travel for many days into it and still it goes on so <clears throat> here is it about the altai mountains and uh, now in this fifth paragraph having arrived the night before by land rover convoy with 1000 kilometer of trans siberian the first reason for their tiredness is this 1000 kilometers that they have covered and uh, the second uh, reason is that high altitude air having robbed most of their sleep they couldn't sleep the night because uh, the air was the air had less oxygen and they couldn't get their proper dose of oxygen and they couldn't sleep they had headaches this is called altitude sickness so this is gleaning out information from the text text missing information aise hi nikala jata hai so jab aap padhte hain pure text ko you should be able to do this stuff then question number 5 uh, sorry question number 4 Why do you think that the first snow leopard wasn't photographed until the late 1970s? In the text, we read that the first snow leopard was tracked in Pakistan in the 1970s. Before that, no one had captured a picture of an, um, a snow leopard. What is the reason for that? The reason for that is that uh, snow leopards are very shy, as you saw in the video as well. They... Uh, they avoid humans they do not go near humans and they are very alert and uh, very cautious about what kind of creatures they go near so here the first photograph of the wild snow leopard wasn't taken until the 1970s in pakistan and animals only simply being recorded for study so the reason this now this information is not given here here we have to infer as you see the inference and implication so they haven't told us why it wasn't photographed but we can make say, uh, guesses about that we can hum andaaze laga sakte hain unhone information directly nahi di lekin hum uske bare mein thoda sa andaaza is tarah se laga sakte hain ki snow leopards insano ke kareeb nahi jata insano se dur hi rehta hai and uski implication ye hai ki phir 1970s tak usko uski tasveer nahi li ja sakti thi in 1970s the picture was captured in pakistan 
So this is one aspect. Uh, then we come to the next question. Explain what is meant by the phrase armchair conservationists. So conservationists for log jo kudrat ke tahafuz pe yakin rakhte hain aur iske liye kaam karte hain and armchair means a person who doesn't go out into the field jo aksar ghar pe reh ke sochta hai duniya mein dusre janwar hon ki baka ke liye field mein ja ke kaam nahi karta so usko hum phir armchair conservationist kehte hain so ये जो लोग थे हम जो इस एक्सपेडिशन पे गए हैं ये इसमें से आपने देखा कि जो सारा बैरल है शी इज ऑन अ वेकेशन उसको दो हफ्ते की छुट्टियां थी तो उस दो हफ्ते को उसने गुजारने का इस तरह से फैसला किया कि वो इस एक्सपेडिशन का हिस्सा बने और उसने बहुत कुछ सीखा इस एक्सपेडिशन से सो आम चेक कंजर्वेशन फिर हम उन लोगों को कहेंगे जिनको जो प्रोफेशनल नहीं है एनिमल्स के हवाले से जो शौक रखते हैं जानवरों के तहफ़ का लेकिन उनकी मालूम भी कम होती हैं और फील्ड का तजुर्बा भी उनका नहीं होता देन एट नंबर सिक्स एक्सप्लेन वट इज मैं बाई देंटेंस दिस इज नॉट द कटली साइड ऑफ कंजर्वेशन वर्क सो वेन रीडिंग द टेक्सट आई हैड टोल्ड यू आउट देयर कटली मीन्स किसी जैसे बच्चे होते हैं सो कोई भी प्यारा सा जानवर में उनको नजर आता है बकरी के बच्चा और एनी डॉग दे कडल इट वो उसको गले लगाते हैं प्यार करते हैं सो दिस इज़ वन एस्पेक्ट ऑफ एनिमल कंजर्वेशन और दी अदर एस्पेक्ट इज के बहुत सारे वाइल्ड एनिमल्स हैं जो कि इंसानी आबादियों से बहुत दूर हैं और बहुत खूनफार जानवर भी हैं कि उनके करीब जाना डेंजरस हो सकता है सो इनको इस एक्सपेडिशन में बहुत सारी मुश्किल देखनी पड़ी दे हैड टू ट्रैक अ लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस एंड एवरी डे दे वुड स्टार्ट इन द मॉर्निंग और कुछ ही आसार उनको मिलते थे लाइफ के वहाँ पे सो so, इस वाले एस्पेक्ट को के उस एनिमल को बचाने के लिए जो आपको बिहाइंड द सीन्स काम करना पड़ रहा है दिस इज द दिस इज़ नॉट द कटली साइड ऑफ कंजर्वेशन वर्क यानी जो हिस्सा कैमरों में या टी वी पर आपको नज़र आता है उसके पीछे भी एक कहानी होती है सो दिस इज दैट थिंग एट नंबर सेवन एक्सप्लेन इन यन वर्ड्स वाई साइकिल्स ऑफ माउंटेन लेपर्स आर सो रेयर अब इन्होंने क्योंकि यूज़ किया वर्ड्स इन योर ओन वर्ड्स तो आप बताएंगे कि क्यों इनको देखना बहुत नायाब सी चीज़ है रेयर मीन्स जो खाल खाल ही नज़र आता हो कम हो एक तो ये कि उनकी आबादी कम है कम रह गई है उनके शिकार किया गया है दूसरा उनका हैबिटेट तबाह हो गया है द सेकेंड थिंग इज़ के दे आर वेरी शाय एंड वेरी कॉशियस अबाउट बींग क्लोज टू ह्यूम वो इंसानों से दूर रहते हैं दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द रीजन फॉर देर स्टेंग अवे और कम ही नज़र आते भी इसी वजह से हैं द लास्ट एक्सरसाइज इन दिस यूनिट इज फोकस ऑन लैंग्वेज सो नाउन फ्रेज सो नाउन फ्रेज इज एनी फ्रेज दैट हैज़ अ नाउन ऑन इट्स हेड एंड द होल थिंग वर्क एज अ नाउन या उसके नाउन के साथ उसके कुछ एडजेक्टिव होंगे जो उसके मीनिंग में इजाफा करती हैं So let's read this. Articles like on the prowl convey a great deal of information in relatively small space. So, इस तरह के articles क्या करते हैं कि कम जगह लेके बहुत ज़्यादा information हमें दे पाते हैं. तो आप जो papers में लिखते हैं आप क्या करते हैं बहुत ज़्यादा space लेते हैं और बात वही एक दोहराते रहते हैं. So आपका इसके opposite है. So one of the techniques that journalists use to do this is to employ a wide variety of complex noun phrases. So आपके writing में किस चीज़ की कमी है? In your writing, you have a lack of noun phrases. अब देखें आपने अगर यही जुमला कहना हो तो you will write separate sentences for it. No easy feat for a bunch of armchair conservationists. अब उसने ये देखा है कि ये जो लोग हैं ना तजर ना तजरबेकार हैं. A bunch of means a group of with little or no scientific training. अब ये training है और ये जो little or no scientific ये इसके meaning में मज़ेद इज़ाफ़ा कर रहे हैं. So the whole thing is a noun phrase. Okay. Understanding information provided by noun phrases. So noun phrases, how do we inform our information? We give it to them in less space. So explain how the two noun phrases in the example given above add to the reader's understanding of nature of the expedition team. So these are the two they have used here. Bunch of armchair conservationists. 
کنزرویشنسٹ ہیں لیکن تجربہ کار ہیں آم چیئر کنزرویشنسٹ ہیں اس میں ہمیں ایک ایکسٹرا ڈائمینشن دیا ہے ان کے حوالے سے اور یہ ٹریننگ ان کی کوئی لٹل ہے بہت تھوڑی ہے یا بالکل بھی نہیں ہے دس از انادر سائڈ آف دیئر نیچر آف دس ایکسپیڈیشن تو یہ ہمیں اس کے بارے میں معلومات دے رہا ہے then identify the objectives used and explain how each adds to the reader's understanding of the text. So here we can see an objective is a word which adds to the meaning of the noun. This is a conservationist noun, hai, armchair adjective. Hai. Or um, scientific adjective, hai, training um, noun. Hai. So what is adjective? Kya karte hai? Is ke meaning mein izafa karte hai, is noun. Ke. Then uh, select three of the most effective examples of noun phrases in the rest of the article and explain how they contribute to your understanding. So, Baki, our text ko par hain. Usme se aur kitne noun phrases aapko milte hain. Noun phrase is a phrase which has a noun in, on its head and the whole thing acts as a single noun. Just this, look at this one. An hour's bumpy drive. So, an hour's bumpy drive drive noun hai aur ye iske meaning mein izafa kar rahe hain so this whole thing is a noun phrase is like aap aur misale isme se nikalenge that will help you understand it better now um, let's summarize what we learned in this lecture so humne kya padha isme so newspaper articles kya karti hain contain more than just information اس میں صرف information نہیں ہوتا information کے علاوہ بھی وہ ہمیں کچھ چیزیں provide کرتی ہیں they need to be structured جب آپ reporter بنیں گے یا writer بنیں گے so you need to be structured آپ کی جو writing ہوگی اس کو آپ ایک ترتیب سے لکھیں گے and entertaining to sustain the reader's interest اور اس میں آپ کوشش کریں گے جیسے انہوں نے کیا تھا کہ reader کی توجہ اپنی طرف مبزول رکھیں گے اور اس کے لیے انہوں نے اوپننگ بڑی اچھی کی تھی کہ اندھیری رات ہے سسپینس کریٹ کیا تھا کہ بارہ لوگ ٹینٹوں میں سو رہے ہیں اور کوئی جانور شکار پہ نکلا ہوا ہے ایک تھوڑی سی سنسنی فیز سی چیز بنا دی ریڈر کے لیے تاکہ اس کا انٹرسٹ اس میں سسٹین رہے دین آلویز ریڈ اینڈ کمپیئر دی اوپننگ پیراگراف ود دا ہیڈ لائن اینڈ اسٹریپ لائن جب آپ نیوز پیپر میں کوئی فیچر آرٹیکل پڑھتے ہیں تو آپ ہیڈنگ پڑھتے ہیں اس کے بعد جو اسٹریپ لائن ہوتی ہے جو شروع میں دو تین لائنیں انہوں نے ایکسپلین نہیں کیا ہوتا ہے کہ اس میں ہے کیا اس کو پڑھتے ہیں یا پھر اس کا انٹروڈکشن جس انداز میں کیا گیا اس سے پڑھتے ہیں تو اس سے آپ اندازے لگاتے ہیں کہ اس آرٹیکل میں کیا ہوگا امپلائڈ مینس کہ جو بات واضح طور پہ نہیں کی گئی اشاروں میں بات کی گئی ہے اینڈ دا لاسٹ ون از لوکیٹ اینڈ چیک ناؤن فریز ایز مچ انفارمیشن از کنویڈ تھرو دیم سو ناؤن فریزز کو آپ غور سے پڑھیں گے پڑھتے ہیں جو آرٹیکلس ہوتے ہیں کیونکہ کم اسپیس گھیر کے زیادہ انفارمیشن ان کے تھرو آپ کو دی جاتی ہے سو گائز دس از اٹ فار دس لیکچر ناؤ بیفور وی موو آن لیکچر ختم کرنے سے Uh, we'll see a small video where um, you'll see the snow leopard, how it hunts in the mountains. This is a small, very small clip. So watch what kind of space is out there. Markor gather for their annual rut. Males must fight for the right to breed, but on these sheer cliffs, any slip by either animal could be fatal. A snow leopard, the rarest of Himalayan animals. It's a female returning to her lair. These are the first intimate images of snow leopard ever filmed in the wild.
she greets her one-year-old cub. Her den is well chosen. It has exceptional views of the surrounding cliffs. On these treacherous slopes, no hunter other than a snow leopard would have a chance of catching such agile prey. A female with young makes an easier target. Her large paws give an excellent grip, and that long tail helps her balance. Silently, she positions herself above her prey. <laughs> 